Tack it before you rack it. What's up, geeks? I'm Kirk, and this is another special edition here on the channel. Kind of an expansion of the videos I posted yesterday on this device, the new Google TV Streamer 4K. I did an unboxing. I also did a deep dive of the software on the new 4K and the setup process. So if you want to see that, I've got links down in the description. I can post those links for you here as well. But what I want to do now is show you four new features that Google just announced this morning as part of the release of the new Streamer 4K. So these are features that I think most Google TV devices are going to be getting. Right now, they seem to be only on the 4K Streamer here because this is the device that has the newest software. So because I've got that in my hands here and I've got it set up, I wanted to take you through those four new features. And we're gonna start with what I think is definitely the best new feature. This is the new smart home features that are built into Google TV, letting you control your smart home directly on Google TV. TV. So the way you're going to find that is by going over on the top of the screen to the settings icon, the little gear icon, and you'll notice right here, you've got an option that says Google Home. So this is new. This is basically the Google Home app that you have on your phone, but it's now integrated right into your Google TV device. So I'll hit that button and now you can see there's the interface. If that looks familiar, that's because it looks just like this. This is that same Google Home app on my phone and it's basically the exact same interface now just integrated into the TV. So it's super familiar. You can almost tell that it's designed to be a phone interface. I'm kind of okay with it because it works with the remote. And let me show you exactly how this works. So I've got my thermostat. I've got my camera here on my Google Home device in my kitchen. I also have uh, different cameras and lighting. Let me go into lighting, for example. Here's all the lights I have set up. I use Z-Wave in my home connected to uh, my Google Home app via a Z-Wave hub. But any way you connect it to your Google Home app, it's all going to show up here. And now if I go down here, I will find my studio RGB bulb number one. So this happens to be the light that is lighting me up right now. So if I tap on that, it will turn that light off. Pretty cool, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Of course, you can set up groups of lights. You can do it however you normally manage your lights in Google Home, and now you can access them right from your TV. If I tap again, It'll turn it back on, and there it is. Let there be light. So what's cool, too, on this specific device, the Streamer 4K, that they in integrated this new star button on the remote. You see that right there on the bottom? And if I push the star button, I've got it set up so this actually takes me right to that Google Home interface. What a great way to have a button that takes you right there. You can adjust the thermostat temperature. You can check out your doorbell camera, any other cameras you have in your home, right there on your TV. I think this is cool. Surprised it didn't happen earlier. I love that this is gonna come to the Google TV devices. Again, it's on the Streamer 4K device right now. Second of all is a feature I was playing around with yesterday in my video, and if you saw my deep dive video, then you may have seen this, and I didn't totally understand it. So let me go into settings, and this is part of the screensaver. It's an AI screensaver feature. So you go into your screensaver, and you can see these are some robots relaxing on the beach. I actually created this using this AI feature. So what you do is, uh, when you go into the screensaver, let me do that again. Go into screensaver, hit the down button, and it'll give you these three options. Go to custom AI art, and now you've got a couple of images that I created. Let me move me out of the way here, and I'm going going to go ahead and erase the images that I already have in here because I want to start from scratch. Oh, keep at least two images in there. So it's not going to let me erase anything because I only have two images, but let me go to create new and you'll see a bunch of different options, airbrush, translucent, landscape, imagery, painting. So let's go to landscape. I can kind of pick one of these. Let's go to mountains since I live here in Colorado. I'll hit generate and it's going to create some AI mountains for me to use in my device. Okay, here we go. These look like real mountains. They're actually AI generated. I can hit save and that'll save that into my little AI gallery. And so when I come back, I will see there is the mountain photo I just created. Now that's okay, but I didn't really give it a lot of direction. So let me go into describe your idea. And this really just lets you use AI image generation to create whatever you want. So let me try one out. Surreal image of a forest with robots relaxing in the sunshine and wavy green grass. Okay, very bizarre. Let's submit that and see what it does with it. 
Ta-da! <laughs> That's what it did with that. Uh, you, if you don't like this, of course, I can hit generate again, and it's going to use that same prompt to now generate a new image. You know, essentially, if you want to kind of give it a couple tries to see what it comes up with something you like. Okay, that basically created the exact same image. Let me try once more to see if it gives me something different because that doesn't make any sense. Oh, there we go. I <laughs> like that. The robot's relaxing in the wavy grass. I'm going to save that, and then now I've got my little gallery of my AI generated images and I can set them all as my screensaver. It'll update my preferences. And when I go back out, I got to turn that screensaver back on. I believe I'm clicking on the right place. There we go. And when I turn that back on, it's going to start up with one of the images and now it'll just cycle through those images. So at the end of the day, it's not a new feature in the sense that it's just an image slideshow screensaver, but it is a new feature because it uses AI right in the TV interface to let you generate AI images to use as your screensavers. I mean, you could theoretically do this on your desktop computer or even your phone and then upload these photos to your device and use those as your screensaver. Kind of cool that they built it in. Kind of a fun feature and pretty unique. It's not something I've seen on other set top boxes. So, you know, I'll give this to Google. There you go. There's our new imagery created. I like that. They seem like very relaxed robots, don't they? <laughs> All right, number three. Let me take you back to the home page and show you number three. This is an integrated well, a couple of things are part of number three. So you want to go over to the top and go to the For You page, and then you go down, and what you'll see is some new kind of summary pages, one of them being sports. So if I click on sports, now it gives me sort of a curated sports page. I mean, Google's not dumb. They know people are watching sports on these devices. And so for them to take all the sports content, right? Because that's the problem is we have so many apps, channels, live streams, etc. They're taking all that content and trying to organize it for you. You've got game highlights on YouTube. You've got the NFL channel, 2024 WNBA. You've got the PGA Tour. I can go down. Free live sports, sports on YouTube, NFL must watch, all kinds of cool content here, a college football section, where to watch it. It shows me which apps have sports on them, popular sports movies, popular sports shows. Kind of cool. Again, this is just a way that Google is curating all of this content that we have and putting it in a place that makes sense. If you're a sports fan, this is where you want to go to see all the different sports stuff. Now, this leads me to the other uh, cool feature, which is kind of ties in with this, but it's using AI to help summarize content. So for example, if I go into a great movie, Napoleon Dynamite, and you'll notice right here on the top, as it loads it up, it now has these AI summaries. These are brand new. What's it about? Kind of gives you a summary of what the movie's about, what people are saying, and then what to know. So it talks about content may have language and substance abuse topics. Really cool. Again, using AI, and this is the way I think AI makes sense for a lot of us. It's not about generating prompts or images or what have you. It's about building things into the devices we use that kind of use all the data, make it human for us, and give us an easy kind of digestible version of what we're looking for. Just a little quick synopsis of what it's about, what people are saying, and what I should know about it. Very cool. That's now integrated right into any TV show and movie that you tap on here on Google TV. Finally, number four, and this is an expansion of a feature that's been on the Google TV devices for a little while now called Google TV Free Play. And this is essentially Google's free streaming app. A lot of companies are doing this. It's ad supported live streams. They've got over 100 channels in here. And the new thing is, is that they've improved the TV guide interface, which from my very minimal experience with this, the, it needed a lot of work and it is so much easier to make sense of now look how clean this is you've got all the different channels you can go through you can pick your different topics these are popular channels right now i can go here and you can see as, as i scroll down it'll take me into the drama section you've got a true crime section you've got news and opinion section it shows you all the shows that are on right now if i tap on one it'll bring that show up full screen and then if i want to get back to the guide i just go to the right You've got this little channel guide icon as well as some other channels I might be interested in. I tap on the channel guide icon and there we go. And I can even go into the channel itself if I want. I can save that as a favorite or I can remove it from my favorites. But, you know, trying to make this easier to navigate because throwing 150 channels or whatever the number is at you is fine. But if you can't find anything to watch, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So Google is saying, listen, we're making this easier. We've got a new interface. I think more people are going to use that now with the brand new interface. 
I hope that was helpful, guys. If you haven't already, check out my unboxing and my deep dive videos of the new Streamer 4K box. I would love it so much if you subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow here on YouTube. And of course, it'll help you to see my new tech content, new tech videos as they come out here on Tech It Before You Wreck It. I'm Kirk.